Good morning friends and welcome back to the channel. Um, today we are going to be doing a garden tour. Um, I think this is either the third or the fourth garden tour. Um, and today I'm just going to go into depth with some of the plants and some of the plants I have out front too. You'll see my spider plant, a dahlia or the lila, I'm not sure what it is to be honest with you that I bought. Um, the spider plant I actually propagated um, while I was in school. Um, and then I'm just gonna go more into de depth in my vegetable garden because there is quite a bit going on and I did plant quite a bit yesterday. So yeah, let's get started. So this right here is the spider plant I started from a propagation. It was in a classroom, but I sat it outside just because it's warm outside. So why not? I actually really like spider plants for like decoration inside and stuff. And then this is the dahlia I have. It's an annual bulb, but I think I'm going to try putting it in the ground because I've heard quite a few different things. And it had this really pretty red and white flower on it, um, but that one was the only one open. But I do have some other buds, so hopefully those will open soon. But yeah, right now it's just sitting on this picnic table. It's very pretty, so maybe I'll have to show you guys when um, another one opens up. Over here I have some starts. Um, I was freaking out because I couldn't find any jalapeno plants, so I just started a ton of them. And then over here I have like some flowers and then some beans. I think some of these are Shasta daisies, Black Eyed Susan, so... I don't know if any of those will I'll be able to actually plant in the garden. Um, I honestly have no idea. I might just try planting them and seeing how it goes. But who knows? So I did um, pull up the garlic I planted last, I think it was either late October, early November, and I have that curing. Um, it's going to cure until I think next Wednesday. And in its place I planted some sweet corn. So this is where that sweet corn is going to go, or is right now. Um, I don't know how well it's going to do I'd say there's roughly like 12 plants in this small area so I've never grown sweet corn before so I'm kind of just hoping for the best at this point point. and then in this pot I have some dill which I did preserve some so that's why it's kind of looking like a little shorter than it did in the last video I got some chives which these chives I plan on just getting another kiddie pool garden and putting those in the kiddie pool garden at the ending of the season and just starting to get another kiddie pool garden so that way I have some more established chives. This was a curly leaf parsley plant that I harvested and I am preserving. That's my favorite thing to do is preserve herbs. And then over here, my first ever flower bed. So, this pink one is a Gerber daisy. Look how good it looks. I know the last time you guys seen it, it had some dead flowers on it. I cannot get over that hot pink color. It's just gorgeous. It's beautiful. And then alyssum, which I'm really excited to see it really fill out. Snapdragons with a fly on it. And I honestly just can't wait for these to get tall. I love the difference in the colors. That's why I bought them. It's just absolutely stunning. Beauty, I started from seed. It's my prized possession. Um, it's a petunia wave. And I just love, see like the differences in like that purple. And just the way it's really starting to fill everything out. It is absolutely gorgeous. And then this one, I have a black coral 
elephant ear. It's actually a Royal Hawaiian black coral. Um, and my cat was absolutely loving this plant inside. So I brought it out here. Um, not sure what I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it and keep it through the winter time and keep it alive and away from the cat, but I don't know if that's going to work out. But look how big that leaf is, it's insane. And then I have my wandering dew plant, or dude plant, also known as wandering dew, but that is a little controversial. And then I do have my one big mizu that I brought back here because it just needed more sun and to kind of be a little bit lifted off the ground. And then my North Folk pine that likes to fall over constantly. And the reason why this, um, these leaves are so different from the new ones is because they actually spray paint the leaves a dark green color. So this is spray paint and this is the natural color. My grandma bought me that. And then I have these beauties, which I think have a little bit of like a sunburn situation going. But these are my, what, string of pearl. Not sure what that is, but it's gorgeous. My SpongeBob plant and my Jade plant. All right, let's look over here. All right, so this is a great plant. It's two years old, starting to hook onto that trellis, which I'm all for. And I'm not sure how long it takes for them to produce fruit, but I'm willing to wait because I just love the way this looks right now. So I had to spray it in neem oil because I started to see a little bit of bug damage. And last year it almost lost all of its foliage, so I wasn't really sure what it would look like this year. Um, these beetles wouldn't stop eating it. So I was very upset, but it looks really good and I'm very happy. So I think I'm just gonna continue spraying it with neem oil um, and hope for the best. Arch trellis. I have some snap peas that are growing. Looks like there's a blossom there. It's kind of dry though. I need to water the garden tonight. And then I have my mint plant. What a beauty. Keep your mint in pots, people. It does overrun everything. And then we have this gorgeous thing. At the top, I have a Mexican oregano, um, a broccoli, a random bean plant. And then I have more broccoli going through the second one, which I love the fact that I could put some broccoli up here. I just wanted to see what my, um, what the limits were. And then I have some of these chive plants. Chives, chives, yep, chives all throughout. This one is an empty one, not sure what I'm gonna throw in there. Some dill. And then I think I have another empty one. And then the rest is all parsley until you get to my three bottom. And those are strawberries. That strawberry doesn't look very good. Come on, little guy. But this strawberry has a blossom on it. And you can see the baby strawberry in there. How wonderful. Over here I have my two tomatillo plants, which I did spray in neem oil because you can see some bug damage. I think that might honestly be a hornworm um, but I cannot find the hornworm. So. But I do not see it. But there are some flowers on it. I think I'm going to spray it with neem oil again. And there's a lot of buds on it too. So very excited for that. I've never grown them before. I don't even know how to tell when you're getting but it's very cool, very cool. Then over here, I have a sweet 100 cherry tomato in a pot with a cage. Um, I don't like cages, I've said that before, but 
I'll use them. I really like them for my pepper plants, but you know, that's okay. Use what we have. And then over here, we have three unknown tomato varieties. It looks like these are gonna be, I don't think they're Roma. This Roma gets a little long. They're probably gonna be beef steak. I don't know though. So I'll give you a look at the fruit and you tell me what you think. What do you guys think? Maybe it is aroma because this one is getting a little long. So, hmm. I don't know. But it did reach the top of my um, trellis system. So I think what I'm going to do is probably just add another panel up here. Give it enough room. Look at this crazy. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let me put my hand behind it. It is an absolutely crazy, those are roots. Isn't that insane? I don't think I've ever seen them that thick before. That is gorgeous. Wow. So technically tomato plants are supposed to grow like this. They naturally are supposed to grow along the ground, but with that, we have a lot of diseases and blight. And so, and like you have a lot of loss of fruit too. So that's why we typically, most people use some sort of trellising system. And I love, I couldn't imagine the amount of fruit that it would produce naturally, but you wouldn't be able to really harvest any of it from, but it is very gorgeous. So love the way any type of trellis looks like, it's just really beautiful. It just catches my eye. <laughs> and over here, I just have some random bean plants that I threw in just because I felt like it. And some volunteer tomatoes. And another volunteer tomato. I'm going to leave that one to see what it does. And then I have some green onions that I threw into that pot. I need to pull these weeds. They're bothering me. Another volunteer tomato. This place is covered in volunteer tomatoes. I couldn't tell if that was bird poop or if it was um, a phosphorus deficiency, which phosphorus deficiency, the leaves turn a purple color. But almost every single um, tomato plant we have has some sort of fruit set on it. The only one that doesn't is the one that is topped so far. And in this pot, we have these gorgeous babies. Beautiful. These are definitely Roma for sure, I think. And then a bean plant that I threw in there because why not? Another bean plant. And then over here I have some okra just put along the fence of this one because um, my okra is failing. I have some beans, some more tomatoes, this tomato plant with lots of fruit set on it. And this one, unfortunately, oh, I just did it again. This one I topped trying to get it to go where it didn't want to, but that's okay. I'm kind of sad about it. We have some candy onions. I forgot what the other variety was, but they're looking good. And I promise you the kids aren't fighting. They're just playing. And then here we have some cucumbers with a cucumber blossom. And I did add some mulch around them just to prevent some splash back from happening. Over here we have some cucumbers, or not quite, uh, broccoli. They're looking good. I'm starting to see a little big, bit of bug damage. Not much though. And then this area I used to have my cauliflower on, but it went, it bolted. It went straight to seed. So I pulled it out and I put some beans here just cause I was worried that I didn't have enough beans. Some more cucumbers right here and an eggplant, which I've never successful growing eggplant. 
So next year, I think I'm gonna try putting it in one of my beds. I have some Brussels sprouts here. And again, I've never been successful growing Brussels sprouts, so hopefully it works out. And then I have some gorgeous cabbage. Very pretty, which I can't tell if that's bug damage or not. I like to inspect the leaves almost every day. They'll get like these weird cabbage worms. They almost look like caterpillars. And you can really see them. You can see hornworms really good with like a blue light at nighttime. So that's what I like to do. And it will just stick out pretty good. But I'll spray them with neem oil to prevent it. It's my cabbage section. Never spray your plants with neem oil during the day because it will burn your plants because the oil does attract the sun quite a bit. All right, let's get started on the second part of the garden, what I like to call the hot mess garden. It's arch trellis. I have some beans. I don't know if it's ever gonna reach here, but that is okay. I'm gonna grow tomatoes up these next year. And then I have another bean section because I was kind of freaking out, so I just recklessly sowed them. Ow, I stubbed my toe. Then I have another tomato plant that I don't know the variety. Three more sweet 100s. I'm gonna have so many cherry tomatoes that they're gonna be coming out of my ear. A beef steak, which I need to prune. Some Rapunzel. Looking gorgeous. See that I have some ripe fruit here. Let's go ahead and pick it. Mwahaha. First tomato of the year. That is so good. Store-bought tomatoes taste like disappointment. Mmm. I didn't even take an Instagram picture. What? I just ate my first tomato. I don't want to come. Why? You? Cause you want a tomato? Mm -hmm. Well, there's no more ripe ones. You'll have to come back tomorrow. Sorry. There's some red ones. Those are orange. You don't want to eat an orange tomato. There's green. You don't want green either. I'm sorry. What's ripe? It's when it turns red. Oh. You know what hormone causes that? Mm -hmm. Ethylene. So the hormone that actually causes fruit to ripen is called ethylene. Um, is that a bee hunch? A what? I just lost it. A bee hunch? That's my first time bringing grapes. You don't can do it. Yeah? I don't know. The infamous kitty pool garden. Got my basil. This cilantro is trying to go to seed. That was gorgeous. We love pollinators. I harvested a lot of chives, oregano, thyme. The catnip I literally butchered down and it is roaring back, which will welcome it. They produce this really pretty, really pretty purple flower and the pollinators absolutely love it. And here you can see it's going to turn purple. It's very pretty. Is that an aphid? No, I don't know what that is. See, check on my beds here.
So on this side, I have serranos and then beans. And then right here is Anaheim chilies and then beans. And then these are Fresno chili, but look at this. How amazing is that? It's absolutely gorgeous. This is a weed. So some more beans and then habaneros. And then those are jalapenos, I'm almost positive. My nose is itching. They need water desperately. But I have jalapeno set. Let me go ahead and show you that. Hi, baby jalapeno. Can you see that? My baby jalapeno. So cute. And then in this bed, I have five watermelon and then I recklessly sewed some pumpkins, some zucchini, some cucumbers just all over in this bed because I was sick of it being empty. All right and on to the last part of the garden. We have some cucumbers and okra and then we have some zucchini squash which it's not really producing any fruit. I think it's hot and not enough water. But I mulched it, so hopefully that will help some of the situation with the watering problem and the splashback. So that's what I'm hoping. I need to water tonight when I get home from work. I used to water the garden every single day. Are you picking your nose? Yeah. But ever since starting work and and really working two to ten every night and not getting home until like ten forty five at night, kind of puts a strain on that. So, but tonight I'm for sure gonna water the garden just because I have no other choice. It really needs it. It's really hot here, um, and it hasn't rained. In probably a week so I gotta do that and hopefully it starts to the squash and stuff start to bounce back a little but thank you for hanging out with me today and taking a nice walk through the garden um, hey we'll see you next time say bye, bye.